And now, without further ado, we'll start with Repair for Future. How we can still repair together in pandemic times. So, Andreas Frisch will talk about that. Or also called Fratinas. I'm sorry, I didn't quite get that. Since 2014, he's active in the repair scene and he has a lot to tell you. So, have fun. Yeah, thanks, Jinx, for this nice announcement. I'm happy to see you in the stream and happy Easter, of course. So, let me begin with a small intro and I'll explain what is a repair cafe anyway, and then I'll tell you what we did during the pandemic to just pass the time, and we'll tell you a little bit about the current political um, climate. So I'm Andreas Fisch. Ah, my nickname is RepairFox. I'm um, an electronic technician and, of course, a software developer with cloud stuff and video. In 2014, I founded a repair cafe in the city of Aschaffenburg. And since 2016, I am in the classical linear TV where I tell old people how to repair things. And I want to start with a quote. Somewhere everyone is a hacker. Everyone has their own tricks how to handle technology in the everyday life. And a great person named Gwa Holland said that 1984 in an interview. He is one of the founders of the CCC. And he already made clear that hack, hacking, as he pronounced it, is more than just pounding on your keyboard, but even things like being able to repair things that belongs in there. And that also means, for me at least, that there is quite an overlap and synergy between hacker scene and the, repairs, uh, and the repair movement. So maybe some people in the stream already were wondering what is a repair cafe because they never heard of it. So here a little bit over uh, about the history. In 2009 in the Netherlands, Martina Postma founded this as an organized movement because of all of the trash that she encountered. So she wanted to prolong the life of our devices. And so she started helping or bringing together people who like repairing things and people who need things repaired and brought them to the table. And so it started as a as uh, people working for free, just for fun, and the goal was to avoid trash. And yeah, it had definitely a social component to it, and that's why it's called a cafe. By now in Germany, there are on the page Reparatur uh, Initiative, meaning Repairing Initiative. There is more than 800 listings, and some of them might not be active anymore, or maybe just did it once. But quite a lot uh, uh, were meeting regularly. I mean, maybe once a month, maybe once a week, or maybe even daily. And at least until the pandemic started, and they were repairing things together. So there is this complex logo from the foundation repair cafe. We were using that in the beginning, but now we were using what you can see now, and we're just a bit more independent. And I really like it because it also includes all the different kinds of repairing that we include. So there's sewing in there, there is electronics, there is woodwork. 
bicycles, everything that's in there. So maybe a few photos in the background and I'll explain how is it working. So people come in with their defect device and then they will sign out a small form declaring we are not responsible for any damage, additional damages. And they'll also include information what might be broken in their opinion and then they put it on a pin board and the helpers can then go through it in, in sequence and check out what they might be able to help with. Of course, not everyone could help with a high voltage radio and me, I could not help repairing trousers or pants or just clothing in general. So everyone does what they can. So the repairing people usually bring their own tools, their measuring devices, their sewing machines. And that in, it's because our repair cafe also is kind of a traveling circus. So we have a new location every time. So that could be a church, um, something communal, some commun community center, something like that, or even a maker space. And the repair cafe itself just has a very small, um, yeah, a small amount of material that we will bring. And the name cafe already uh, indicates that there usually is coffee, cake. Sometimes we have warm food, like uh, mostly oriental food. And people really like that. While they're waiting, they can eat something. Here, the ADFC, it's a German bicycle club, was suggesting uh, or was helping with bike repairs, but um, furniture makers were also include, uh, also offering help. Here, something is being sought. So, yeah, some sewing. Usually people, uh, sometimes people come with their own sewing machine and they had been using it before but weren't sure anymore and so we, they were just being showed how to use it. And here is one event where some people work at the same time. There's me and there's some sewing happening. This is a very nice picture with a lot going on that sadly we can't even imagine right now. I hope it'll return soon. Yeah, so I'd say 90% of the cases are very simple cases. Usually you already know what's wrong before you even open it. So maybe a wire burned through or just uh, something got unhooked and has to be rehooked. That's really most of the repairs where people really know very quickly what is wrong and how to fix it. And people can be sent home with a working product or device really soon. But sometimes it's more complex, like digital technology, DVD players, stuff like that. And if you start and try to follow digital signals with an oscilloscope, then that's already too much for this. So we only do it from 12 to 7 uh, p.m. And we just don't have that much time. Yeah. Yeah, what could we do during pandemic? Some year ago, we were really surprised by this and we did not have a plan. So most initiatives were just dropping the first uh, date in March last year. But we were quickly starting a remote solution and in April already, we had, we could offer the first uh, the first uh, date offering and we are producing these flyers in the at the beginning of the year and for 2020 we already had these flyers printed and of course we didn't want to just drop that and so of course we were using the same dates and just invited people to our digital repair cafe. 
If the situation was allowing it, so for example in June, July or maybe September, we also had some offerings in person, but of course with the people announcing them beforehand. Normally you can just drop in unannounced and you just wait with some talking and some coffee. So we even have returning customers who just were looking for some device for an excuse to drop by because they were there for the social component. That wasn't possible, of course. So you had to announce yourself and you had a time slot. One visitor per hour per repair person. And that worked quite well, of course, with distancing, with disinfecting, with a mask, the usual. But of course, Come fall, this wasn't possible anymore. So here a small list with repair cafes that I found after a very short search. Most of them are obviously on our website as well. So they are linked to. And many of them actually they just have their normal timetable. They continue that online. With RC Gotha, it's that they make individual uh, um, appointments with people. So that's also a very nice thing. And in the back, there are links. So if you are on the website that's linked in the far plan, in the schedule, you can just have a look at this directly. What I really like. And where we have the crossover in the mindset, the mindset between hackers and repairing is that many people don't only want free solutions for the video conferencing, so not only for free, but also open and open source. Many use a big blue button, BBB, many use Jitsi. So, for example, the Repair Café Achim, they do that every week and they really use Jitsi from Chaos Computer Club Hamburg. Some people have their own Jitsi uh, server, basically. Some use the official Jitsi server and a few initiatives, of course, use Zoom or Microsoft Teams. So how can you work, how can it work that you repair online, remote repairing? So this is a screenshot from the first online repair date and Annie came with a broken projector. And that was really fun and was really motivating for the next date because Annie really without hesitation was accessing this and she had a few basic tools already and after a long time it really it really took time it was very complex of course usually the most difficult task is to just open the device without destroying anything and then we found the, uh, the broken part that has to be exchanged. Obviously, the target group for this online repair cafe is a different one than in the classic repair cafe. In the classic repair cafe, you mostly have uh, people who are past their working time and older people, they really don't want to throw away things. So that was before we were just yeah buy and throw away. And online we have people who have more affinity for technology, so they have less problems getting into it. Which is nice of course as well. So to talk to different target groups. So here we see how Annie was filming with her phone into her projector. And we could just see 
that this voltage regulator is missing a part. This is obviously broken. We could just order it. And because we could still read what kind of part it was, and we will have to just repair that for her when we can meet in person again. What we can see is that the video quality is not always perfect. You can't really see it well. And that's, of course, in the web RTC, not ideal. It's, it's a kind of gambling most of the time, how well the video works. But in general, it's possible to do HD but not always. Uh, different kinds of issues can cause problems there, like weak hardware or bad internet connection. And some initiatives, they also try to do it in an asynchronous way. They use WhatsApp messages, so photos, high-res photos, or via email, so the repairing person can have a better image. What's very nice online is that just at the same time you can have some repair manuals from dubious sources, so you can check how to open it without breaking anything. Or if you are debugging software problems and just download drivers directly for a notebook and you can use TeamViewer or some other remote software to just do it. Well, apart from the local initiatives, there's also a, an online rep uh, repair cafe by the network. So it's like a, a, an overarching umbrella um, initiative. And that started in February. So start of February, every evening they were having this. And after that, they did it monthly. So the next will be in two weeks on Thursday, again, 19, uh, so 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And helpers from all over Germany take part in this, and not only all over Germany, but uh, including Austria and Switzerland, so everywhere where they speak German. So it's more a language thing. Die benutzen äh, dafür das Big Blue Button der Binary Kitchen, also auch wieder einer unserer Hackers. They use the Big Blue Button of the Binary Kitchen, which is one of our hacker spaces. And you, you have to say that this is sort of also for their own purpose, because among the helpers there are a lot of people that kind of that, that have an urge to do this, and that that like that miss repairing things, that really want to repair things. And so this is at least a small pathway to let that urge loose. So there are actually some, some waiting lists for, for um, the, the next couple of appointments and uh, they usually go away very quickly. There are some still left for May right now. So, and yeah, so for, for every uh, appointment, every meeting that we do, um, the, the helpers are usually more than the helpees. And um, yeah, it was over 20 the last time we did it in March. And uh, it was like 10 repairs. And then a lot of people also were just visiting because they were more the kinds of people that were repairing than anything else. For example, the, the classic things that one can do there are things like um, maintenance work. For example, um, like, hey, this vacuum may have a HEPA filter that uh, might get dirted up and should be replaced, or things like um, if the ejector tray of the DVD player isn't working anymore, then you can replace the little rubber band that pulls it. Lots of things that can be done without any soldering iron or multimeter. For the older participants, there is also a possibility to dial in using phone. If they maybe can't use Big Blue Button on the web, they can actually just get their phone and dial a number and also get to people that can help them. 
online and yeah then here's the link again to our online repair cafe which as i said is monthly all right so now our repair cafe is only one little drop in a big sea uh, and the big problem is electric waste so i found this last week maybe you remember this um, this ever given ship that uh, stranded in the suez canal with its 200,000 uh, tons of payload and now imagine that 60 of these ships and everything they have loaded is just the electronic waste of just Europe in one year. That's 20 kilograms of waste per person, which doesn't sound like much, but the many, many millions of people that all produce 20 kilograms, that is beyond any imagination. And maybe we, we can't really make a big dent in that, but we can maybe start to get people thinking about this and um, make people realize that something about the system needs to be changed there and then of course pass that on to politics and industry. The European Union has an ecological design guideline since a couple of years and that gave us for example energy saving labels on, on appliances and uh, the wattage descriptions on vacuums and LED light bulbs. But then again, the industry, of course, um, often takes that into the absurd and into the negative. And then there's another thing that will be started this year, which is for appliances like displays and washing machines and such that should strengthen the right for repair for these things, which is um, they have to enable a destruction-free opening uh, with common tools for these devices. They demand that they have to have a list of uh, replacement parts and offer replacement parts for at least 10 years and also to publish repair instructions for professional repair people which is a start but only a small start because it is only applies to these very small groups of products and the the biggest part of part of waste is for example small household devices and IT devices like notebooks and phones and all of those are not included in this legislation and we hope that they will be in there at some point then, of course, who are professional repair people? Well, nobody really knows. There's no official definition for this and no list or no register for companies for that. So I, whether the, we don't know whether those are people that do this uh, to actually finance their entire being or if that also is a person that maybe helps out in a repair cafe. The delivery times should be at, at most 15 days for replacement parts, but a family that has to wait for two weeks for a replacement part is also very difficult when the washing machine doesn't work. Software has to be made available, for example, diagnostic software, but it doesn't have to be uh, kept up to date. So that brings up the problem that maybe uh, the, the licensing could be used to keep versions away there. Um, France, our neighboring country, has gone a step ahead there and introduced a repairability index, a numerical one, and that is a number between 1 and 10 that the manufacturer has to calculate from a bunch of criteria. and. Then across this year, they will have to, they're required to apply this and uh, list it for phones and washing machines and also lawnmowers. And uh, I like that explicitly smartphones and laptops are in, in this and it should 
probably be um, expanded to all of the devices of the electronic variety. And uh, they also demand that um, repair manuals have to be offered up for at least nine years. So if they do that for nine years, then they will uh, get a higher score in this index um, than how difficult the uh, disassembly is like how many work steps have to be done, what kinds of tools are required. Um, so if your device is, like your smartphone, is entirely glued up where you can't change your battery, will probably not get any points there. A Fairphone where everything um, can be repaired with a small Phillips head screwdriver would get full marks. And the availability of these parts, uh, of replacement parts, also factors into that. For example, the, the smallest part of and the, the total price and also some, some other, sorry, the, the price of the parts also factors into that and uh, the properties of the product itself, small other things. So I haven't actually seen this index used. I looked at the French Amazon and it doesn't list it at all yet, but starting from 2022, um, they will have to and will get fines otherwise. So I assume that will happen sometimes within this year that those will appear somewhere in the payment and uh, in the stores. So what would be my perfect wish as a repair activist and environment protectionist? This is, of course, something that the industry is um, furiously defending itself against because the system isn't really working the way we want it to yet. But the most important thing to me, more important than like a repair index, would be a requirement for, to, for listing the expected life expectancy of the device and also requiring them to offer warranty for that period. For example, these LED lights that are supposed to last for 30,000 hours but don't even last for 10% of that and uh, maybe fail shortly after the end of their warranty. That should be a thing that the people that have the choice between a product that might cost double the price but will last for 10 times as long and that that decision should be easy to make. So if one washing machine maybe costs a thousand bucks but will last, last 15 years and has a, an assured life expectancy with maybe the requirement, required repairs for things that of course like need to be replaced but the other one costs 300 bucks but only has four months life, ex life expectancy, then it's not hard to think about which one is probably the better choice. Very expected, very important also would be a return system for uh, things that are still working or easy to repair because currently everything that one brings to the recycling yard is basically waste. A lot of people will exchange things that are still working or even or maybe easy to repair are being thrown away and those usually will be shredded and only be recycled for the materials. Like maybe a bit of resources are coming from that with a lot of energy and resources those will be recycled. That just can't be a good thing. And Belgium has a system for this. And basically, their um, large goods, large, large trash um, collection agency that will actually collect these devices and try to bring them to places that can repair them and then bring them back into the um, into stores to be bought. And then, for example, other things like Fre Repair for Future or Hey Alta, other project that we heard about um, in the last couple of days, which is collecting computers from companies that still work perfectly but would have been 
would have gone to the trash. And that, of course, is a catastrophe. That, that really can't be. These things have to be returned to extend their lifetime. And then, of course, um, supporting repair with state with government money. For example, in Vienna, if people repair their own device or have them repaired, they often get a bonus of about 100 euros. Then in other countries, there are some other bonuses for repairing things, but in Germany, it's usually um, if, for example, the piano repairs man and some other ones uh, come to your home, you usually get 20% off, but that should also be applicable to bringing your device to a repair person. And then also, uh, actually taking into regard the environmental and ecological implications of uh, producing a device and uh, actually thinking about the supply chains of these things and that should be included in um, the way people buy things. There, there is a law which um, is a lot of bureaucracy for manufacturers currently and one could actually do wonderful things with that. Um, for example, required return programs and yeah, and um, this, this, a lot of this is like counted on waste, but waste isn't really what we should think about. We should just build devices that last longer and can be used for longer. And of course, here a few links and sources. The pad is linked in the schedule, of course. And yeah, I'm looking forward to your questions. And thank you for your attention. Yeah, great. I was sitting here the whole time and want to just ask questions. Yeah, I really think this is a very, very great... And it's great to just see this, how many people want to repair things. When, and I still like how the list of helpers is even longer than the list of people who want help. Yeah, maybe it's a bad public uh, bad PR work. Oh, maybe. Yeah, but we also have a very long list of questions. So if you have further questions, check out the schedule in the detailed view of the talk. There you will find the link to the question pad and of course the slides with all the links. Yeah, very, very great. So let's just How well are people provided with tools and how do you find solutions? Well, it's, uh, that's quite a range. There's like one billion um, home depots or uh, hardware shops. So people have a lot of tools, but how how to use them? That's the trouble. Where do I have to screw? Where do I have to uh, measure? And this works quite well because you can just show them online how to use the tools. Some things are difficult because most uh, cases are clipped in and you need a lot of uh, sensitivity in your fingertips. And of course, you need to have done it. It helps to have done it before. And repairing a phone, if you see sets like this with these very small screwdrivers and Apple really just likes inventing new screw heads for the next iPhone generation, if it's not glued all together, that's something that's not as widely distributed already. Yeah, I already have some experiences with Chaos Make School, where a student was asking, how do I open this? <laughs> so, yeah. One very fascinating question, but that might be more bureaucratic. What about DIN or so there are laws for repairing devices when you are doing something to a microwave, who is responsible if something bad happens basically? 
So the Network Rep uh, Repair Initiative says, well, we are not repairing anything that, ha that has mains voltage. So this is basically it. In classical repair cafes, they decided on a case-by-case -case basis, basically. So these laws, these directives, they mostly are only applicable for professionals. So in the moment where I do it professionally, if, when I do it as a company, or if I take money for it, and we are mostly neighbors who help each other, and so we say, well, we do not need these, um, these tests that are required by law for professionals. But it also has to be said that these tests are sometimes really useless and sometimes they are really, really important. So a matter of life and death. So it really depends. The laws are very inflexible, but definitely no repairman will give out something where they are not certain that it's safe. So they have to be safe. They will be safe that it's safe for the guest to use. And in when in doubt, we'll throw it out. How effective are the repairs? Ah, how effective are the people who are filtering in the trash heaps already? So the communities are already filtering out trash sometimes. Could we maybe uh, cooperate to maybe inherit uh, replacement parts? Yeah, that's very different. It, so that's difficult. Uh, well, it's very different. So from place to place, because all the communities are very different from each other. Some uh, in Jena, for example, they have a contract with the with the place that collects the trash, so they can, are allowed to just get things out. And in the Schaffenburg, for example, no no chance. They have excuses without end because yeah it's dangerous or who will who will go to jail or yeah but they also have these quotas they have to fill so the electronics law there are defined um, return quotas so a certain quota a certain part of sold items on devices has to be collected because this uh, trash has to happen and of course that's not nearly enough because some people are just collecting trash or they are throwing it out in the normal trash and so they really do not want to hand it out again and I already heard from a trash heap 2.0 or more recycling place. So it's a project where a repair cafe and um, institutions like schools should be connected to such a collection place for electronic waste. And yeah, the next question. Where does the calculation or the collection of these quotas, where is it happening at the moment? Is there maybe a central place or how does it work? Yeah, so there's a certified... There are certified places for collection. So those places where the communal pla uh, collection places hand over and in bigger cities, those are institutions of their own. And yeah, but it's mostly just places that just collect and shred the devices and just take out the metal, for example. And I think, so I'm not well informed with the bureaucratic stuff, but as far as I know, they are not really collecting much data. So, yeah, there is many annotations and notes and ticks and trips from uh, viewers. Okay. And I really like that. So, for example, look at eBay and others. So, check for old products. 
This stuff lasts forever, and that's kind of sad as well. But also, it's great. But yeah, sadly, when um, when you lose relatives and you are just inheriting all the devices, they will last for another twenty years. Yeah, there's the, there's a very famous. Uh, famous uh, mixer from the GDR so it's very old but it will last forever and that's it's famous for that or of course devices without power without electricity you might not believe it but they will last for another hundred years so are there maybe further questions if not or if you think of a question later Feel free to visit the online repair cafe. Next one will be. Let's have a look. I think the 15th. Yes, the 15th of April, Thursday evening. And in Cologne, people are looking forward, are happy about repairing people. So if you are close to that, just drop by. At the latest, when the pandemic is over, people will have a lot of need. Uh, I'm telling you now, people have collected broken devices and it will go full steam ahead. Yeah, so everything is uh, renovated and you cleaned out your house and you found a lot of broken devices. Yeah, so thank you very, very much. It was a very nice talk. I myself had fun and I'll look for something to repair. Andreas, thank you very much. And yeah, it was great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you from me as well. We'll see you soon.